in recent history to respond rationally to the new configuration of power, to the corporate coup d'etat that has been undertaken, what Sheldon Boland calls our system of inverted totalitarianism. Uh, it was an understanding that the formal mechanisms of power no longer work to carry out incremental or piecemeal reform as they were designed to do. Uh, essentially, we are trapped in a system of political paralysis. There is an inability on the part of government to respond rationally. That is a constant theme in Paul Krugman's columns to the problems that beset us, whether that is climate change or whether that is the financial collapse, the mortgage crisis, um, the chronic underemployment, unemployment, the fact that a million people a year go bankrupt because they can't pay their medical bills, 80% of whom had health insurance. Uh, all of our legislation is written by corporate lobbyists. Uh, the power elite uh, understands perfectly well what's coming uh, and is radically reconfiguring the legal system to criminalize dissent. Obama's assault on civil liberties has been far worse than the assault carried out by George W. Bush, whether that is the use of the 2001 Authorization to Use Military Force Act to justify the assassination of American citizens, the FISA Reform Act, or Amendment Act, uh, that retroactively makes legal what under our Constitution has traditionally been illegal, the warrantless wiretapping, monitoring and eavesdroppings of tens of millions of American citizens. And we know all of our personal information is being stored in supercomputers in Utah. The use of the Espionage Act six times to shut down whistleblowers. This is, was never designed to silence whistleblowers. Uh, it was only used three times until Obama came to office, the first time being against Daniel Ellsberg. Uh, as a former investigative reporter, I can tell you that you cannot do anything at this point to challenge the official government narrative. You cannot even get background briefings because people are frightened of going to jail. And of course, the National Defense Authorization Act, which Obama signed into law on December 31st, Section 1021, uh, permits the U.S. military to seize U.S. citizens uh, strip them of due process, hold them in military facilities indefinitely. Uh, I sued the president uh, over this in federal court. I won in September, uh, and the Obama administration appealed. Uh, what was fascinating is that they uh, went to Judge Catherine Forrest after she gave her decision and her 112-page opinion, which is really a brilliant kind of dissection on the destruction of the separation of powers and is worth reading, uh, uh, asked for an emergency stay, meaning they wanted the law put back into effect uh, until the appellate court would hear the case. She refused. They demanded an emergency hearing with the appellate court uh, at 9 a.m. in the morning the next Monday uh, for an emergency hearing and an emergency stay, which they got. The only reason that I and the lawyers, uh, Bruce Afron and Carl Mayer, can make out that the Obama administration reacted so aggressively is because they're already using it, uh, probably on uh, Pakistan and U.S. dual nationals and places like Bagram. Um, the inability to curb Wall Street, uh, a close examination of uh, the Obama health care bill, which was written by corporate lobbyists, in particular Liz Fowler, uh, who worked for Baucus, and is now going back into the industry. Um, the uh, inability to deal with the, the, the most important crisis that is confronting us, that's climate change. The fact that the Obama administration has not only approved the southern leg of the Keystone XL pipeline, but appears to uh, uh, almost certainly be ready to approve the northern leg uh, so that they can exploit the tar sands. All of these are indications that essentially power has been wrested from the hands of the citizenry. Uh, there is no way within the American political system anymore to vote against the interests of corporations like ExxonMobil or Goldman Sachs. And Occupy understood this. And they understood, number one, where power had been transferred to. And that was from the legislative bodies and the judicial bodies, and of course the press. Let's not forget the press has been completely corporatized. Uh, you talk about banks, roughly a half dozen corporations, Viacom, General Electric, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, Disney, Clear Channel, control almost everything most Americans listen to or watch, creating this kind of faux 
uh, narrative. On the one hand, it's court gossip from Fox or it's court gossip from MSNBC. It's all the same junk, just spun differently. Uh, and the real substantial issues that matter to the majority of American citizens are never mentioned. It, it, it reminds me of what uh, Dorothy Parker once said about Katherine Hepburn's emotional range as an actress. It goes from A to B. <laughs> Step outside of that paradigm uh, and you instantly become a pariah. Uh, as anybody who uh, at MIT knows Noam's Chomsky's great work will tell you. Uh, or Ralph Nader, who's been fighting corporations and understands corporate power better than anyone else in this country. And Occupy grasped that. They also grasped that the only mechanism we have left by which we can save ourselves is civil disobedience. And they courageously carried out those acts of civil disobedience. Um, uh, repeatedly. And what was the response of the state? The response of the state was to move in and physically eradicate the encampments in a coordinated effort run by the Obama administration. Because this movement terrified the power elite, and in particular, the Democratic Party. This kind of faux liberalism that speaks in that traditional feel your pain language, and yet has abandoned the very constituency that they purport to represent. And that's very dangerous. I covered the war in the former Yugoslavia for the New York Times. I watched what political paralysis does. And that is essentially what's happened. We have a system that is incapable of responding to the legitimate grievances and injustices that are being visited on tens of millions of Americans. Half of this country is now living in either poverty or a category called near poverty. And what is the response of the corporate state? It is to cut unemployment benefits for hundreds of thousands of Americans, which means tens of thousands of these people are going to lose their homes. And they're all about to push us over the so-called physical cliff. Corporations know only one word, and that's more. And because all of the restraints, the regulations, and the impediment to corporate power have been lifted, they have, as Marx understood and Carl Pugliani understood, Commodify everything. Human beings have become commodities, and the natural world has become a commodity. You see it, 40% of the summer Arctic sea ice melts. And Shell and Exxon look at it as a business opportunity. It's insanity. We are now all aboard the Pequot. Mm -hmm. Moby Dick, Melville's most prescient study of the American character, and Ahab's in charge. And as Ahab said, my means and my methods are sane, only my object is mad. And the inability to stand up, whether it's over the inevitable financial dislocation, these people are harvesting the country. Anytime hedge fund managers, and let's for, you know, never forget that in institutions like this, half of the trustee boards come from this class, most of them should be in jail. When they walk into inner city areas and start talking about poor children's education, it's not because they want kids to read and write, it's because they know the federal government spends $600 billion a year on education and they want it, and they're going to get it. There is no mechanism left except civil disobedience. And having covered movements all around the world, the revolutions in Eastern Europe, the two Palestinian uprisings or intifadas, the street demonstration that brought down Slobodan Milosevic, you know that the tinder is there. And I spent the last two years in the poorest pockets of this country, from Camden, New Jersey, to the produce fields in Amakami, Florida, to the coal fields of southern West Virginia. You know the tinder is there. But you never know what's going to set it off. It's usually something relatively benign. Uh, uh, an elderly woman gets foreclosed in her home in Utah or something. But I know it's coming. Will it look like Occupy? Will it be called Occupy? You can never know. I think it's better to think of Occupy not as a movement, but as a tactic. Rosa Parks refuses to move on the bus. It's five years until we see the Freedom Runners. And because the state has not responded rationally, because the state has proved paralyzed, because it not only cannot address the grievances, but essentially allows corporations to extract 
more and more and more this reconfiguration into a form of neo-feudalism, the only thing I can tell you as a reporter is that something is coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then we'll move on to the